Next up we're going to be needle sculpting the face in order to create sockets for our eyes. Basically what that means is if you look at it at the moment the eye is just sitting there on the surface of the crochet. What we want to do is we want like if you put your thumbs on it and you just press in you'll see it creates two indentations that become like little sockets for the eyes and that is what we want to create. Now we start off by pinning our positions. Spot number one is underneath the muzzle, just off center to the right, over there. Spot number two is the inside corner of the right eye, just above the muzzle. Spot number three is the outside corner of the eye on the same row height. Spot number four, we go under the muzzle again, about a stitch to the left of spot number one. Then for spot number five, we go to the inside corner of the left eye, just above the muzzle. And for spot number six, we go to the outside corner of the left eye, on the same row height as the inside spot. So you should have six places marked. Now in the PDF pattern that's available in my Etsy shop, you will have a diagram that shows you exactly where these pins are and with arrows and written instructions also explain what to do precisely. So we've got spot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. We're then going to need a needle that is long enough to work through the muzzle to the eyes, so longer than your normal tapestry needle, and on it you're going to have a length of your taupe yarn that you're going to be working with. Now I am going to be removing the pins before I do the sculpting because I find they get in the way of a needle, but um, as I said the PDF pattern does have the diagrams in it if you need a reference to work from. Okay, so we're going to start by going in with a needle at point one and coming out at point two. This can be a bit tricky, especially in the beginning, but this is what you want. So we've entered at point one, we're exiting by point two. We then pull the needle through and the yarn but you want to leave a yarn tail hanging down here at the bottom and you want to make sure that that yarn tail keeps hanging down. We're then going to go to point three to enter and we're going to come out at the bottom here, point one where we started. That is where we want our needle to exit. Okay, pull our needle through. As we pull through, you'll notice the yarn is making a line across your safety eye. We don't want that, we're just going to move it to the bottom with our needle, like so. And then we are going to hold on to our short tail while we pull on our long tail. And as we pull, that stitch will become tighter. You'll see the eye starting to sink into the head like that. So that's the start of your socket being created. We then enter by spot 4 which is just next to spot 1 and we come out at spot 5 over there, pull our yarn through. All the while make sure your yarn tail does not disappear. Enter at spot 6 and exit again at spot 4 at the bottom. We're going to have the same effect where the stitch makes a line over the eye. We're just going to move it to the bottom of the eye towards the muzzle. Hold on to the short end that we started with and pull tight. As we pull tight that stitch disappears underneath our safety eye. You can see it now looks a little bit like these eyes are uneven. This one's a bit higher than that one. Um, 
that generally happens on the first pass, don't stress. I repeat this pattern, so I'm going in by spot one again, and out by spot two. In at spot three, back out at spot one. So this is now the second time we're following this pathway and pull tight. You can see as we pull tight it's starting to deepen, it's starting to even out a bit. This is exactly what we want. With each pass that we do it will tighten a little bit and sink in a little bit giving a bit more of a natural look to the eye. We then repeat the other side where we go in at spot four and out at five. In at six. And back out at four at the bottom. Need a bit of help from the pliers. And pull tight. At this point you're going to look at your eyes and check are they on the same height. If this one's a bit higher, you repeat this route. If that one's a bit higher, you just repeat this side's route. If they are nice and even, you don't need to repeat. You check how deeply they have sunk in. If you're happy with the depth of your eye socket, then you can tie off. If you'd like them to go in a little bit deeper, then you repeat both routes. And uh, you can see as I'm just pressing on them to get them into proper position as well, making sure that everything is where I want it. So at this point we're going to now tie off and work away. So what I do is I send my yarn to a random spot in the head over there. Snip this off a little bit shorter. We want to do the same to our beginning yarn tail. So that it comes out at the same spot. There we go, and then you can just knot these. Snip them off short and hide the knot inside the head, same as we did before when we tied off the muzzle. There we go. And that is your result after your needle sculpting. So you can see the eyes have just sunk in a little bit. It's a very small change, but it makes a significant difference to the attractiveness of your toy afterwards. Next, we're going to be embroidering the nose. So to start, we're going to need four pins. Your first pin, you want to put on the inside corner of the right eye. But when you look from the top, you don't want to go directly there. You want to go one round away from the head. So let's insert it there. We want to insert a second pin on the inside corner of the left eye. You want to make sure that you get the same angle from eye to eye. 
go. Our third pin is going to go in the center between the two, but to create a triangle. over here. So now we've got a triangular space that has been marked out. Just want to double check if I'm happy with this. Yes. Okay, and then your fourth spot is going to be right at the bottom of the muzzle in between where you made point one and point two when you were doing your needle sculpting. So your fourth spot is right there. And you've got them one, two, and three on the top. Now what you're going to need is again your longer needle and a black length of yarn on it because we will be embroidering in black. Now we're going to start from a random spot in the head and we're going to come out by the center pin here. The nose. So, take the center pin out, sometimes it gets stuck a little. Now when you pull your yarn through, again make sure that you leave a yarn tail hanging out, you're going to need that later to tie off. Now we're going to go to the second pin. Where we're going to go in and we're going to exit at the third pin. What we're doing is working a black triangle between the three points that we had marked on top of the nose. So that's your first side. You can then take this pin out and that pin. We're going back to this point here and coming out at the same place on the side there, so that we've got the next side of the triangle. We're then going to work down to our starting point and I just like coming out at the corner again. As you can see that gives us our triangle that will form the nose of Dog the Dog and we are one round length away from the face here. What we're going to do now is we're going to make numerous stitches which will all go in at the center point but they'll come out at different points along this top line because we're literally going to use our black yarn to color in the triangle that we've created until the entire thing is nice and black and you can't see the taupe yarn showing through anymore. Now, each time I just exit a little bit or basically a stitch to the right. You can see it's not immediately going to cover everything up. You're going to need to work up and down a couple of times. But with each stitch we make we color in the triangle just the littlest bit more. Now when you do this you want to pull your yarn tight enough that it lies flush with the muzzle but not so tight that it starts creating indentations. You just want it to lie nice and neat on top of the muzzle. So now I'm going to work our way back towards the left. And with each stitch comes a little more black and a little less top. I prefer doing this over using safety noses. One, because you can never find the right size. And two, they are so difficult to position correctly because you have to insert them before you sew the muzzle on. And once you've sewn the muzzle, the position of that safety nose could be completely off. So I just find it better to embroider a nose on. Plus it's one less thing that can come out. Okay, 
As you can see it's starting to look good but we've still got a little bit of taupe showing through there and a little bit showing through there so we're just going to make sure that we are covering every spot you want your nose to be a very nice solid black Almost there. As you can see, this uses quite a bit of yarn. That's why I started off with such a long piece of yarn. But if you find yourself running out, it's not the end of the world. Just go tie off where you started and add a new piece of yarn exactly the same way you added the first piece. Okay. At this point, we've now colored in the whole nose, so I go back to one of the top corners with my yarn. What you can see if you look at the top end, where we had a nice straight line there, it's now sort of become a bit ragged because of all the stitches we made. So I like making one large black stitch across like that. So. I come out on this corner, I'm just going to go to this corner and I'm going to make sure that I pop out at the bottom in the middle where we've been coming out the whole time. So we're just going to do one stitch like that and you'll see that gives you a nice straight edge again across the top for your nose. Now what we want to do next is we want to split our muzzle in half, that's what point 4 over here is about. So we've come out at this tip, we're going to remove this last needle. You want to go in at the bottom, the middle of the muzzle, and you want to make sure that you come back out at this bottom tip of the triangle that you've been working through the whole time with a needle. So you're going in at the bottom and coming out at the tip, but you want to make sure that you get this in the middle, that's very important. Um, you're going to find that you will now be creating a large black stitch on the outside of the muzzle like this. Before you pull tight, check that you've actually got it in the center. If you're happy with the position, pull on it. And you can see it starts splitting the muzzle in half. Now I find it's always necessary to repeat this stitch at least once, sometimes more. So you go in by point four again and out by point one. This section can be a little bit tricky. The needle doesn't always like being forced to go where you want it to go. Let's see if I move the body out of the way like that. If you come out the wrong spot, just pull your needle back a little bit and reposition. There we go. Even with years of practice, it can take a while to get the correct positioning. It's just an awkward spot to work in, but the results are worth it in my opinion. So pull tight again. There we go. As you can see, it's starting to look nice. Now, I've got a little gap here that I want to cover, so I'm just going to go under the stitches from the nose, in one side out the under, the other. Now 
And in doing that, I've just connected this yarn to the nose and sharpened the triangle bit at the bottom. So I go in this spot again. But this time my needle is going to come out at my starting spot. So that the starting tail and the ending tail are coming out through the same hole. Through. As always, we're going to knot our work together. To ensure that nothing comes loose or comes out. ends and push the knot into the head. There we go. And that gives you the nose for Doug the dog as well as the split muzzle that you need to have. So this is what you should have at this point in the game. Next we're going to embroider the eyebrows and the eyelashes for Doug the Dog. So we're going to start off by marking out our spots. We want to go one, two, three rounds above the eye on the inside corner of the eye for our first pin. We then want to go one, two, three stitches to the right on the same row. We then want to go down a row and one, two stitches further to the right. That's for our first eyebrow. We want to do the same thing for the second. So it is one, two, three stitches above. And let's just make sure we get the exact same spot. You want to check when your line comes down that it's the same. This time we count one, two, three stitches to the left. We then count one round down and one, two stitches. Just want to check that things are actually matching. This one needs to move a little bit there. Go, yeah, so that's our eyebrows. For our eyelashes, we stick one pin right next to the inside corner of the eye on either side. And then our second pin is going to be around lower. And it's going to be on the outside of the eye and one stitch away from the actual eye. Like that. So this is how it places marked that we need to create our eyebrows and eyelashes. You then need another length of black yarn on your needle. We're going to go in a random spot. And we're going to come out at spot number one. Then we put the first pin. Again, you want to leave a tail hanging so that you can knot your work together later. We're then going to go to this spot over here to enter. And when we exit, we're going to come out here in the middle between the two. So in by the far side, out by the middle. When you pull through, you'll notice this creates a straight line for your eyebrow, but we don't quite want a straight line, we want a bit of a curve. So what I do is, my yarn is on top at the moment, so I put my needle over and under the eyebrow. I then go in the same hole I came out of and I exit by this pin over here 
when I do that. Now doing this is just going to wrap my yarn around that eyebrow with a teeny tiny little stitch and that tiny little stitch is what actually creates the curve in our eyebrow. We're going to repeat the process on the other side. Go in by the far pin, come out by the middle pin, remove both pins, put your needle over the stitch and under the stitch and go in the same spot that you came out of. This time we're going to come out here by the corner of the eye. Can be a little bit tricky working with the safety eye because the backs will generally be getting in your way. There we go. This is where the pliers come in very handy. And with that tiny stitch there, it completes our curve for that eyebrow. Now to make our eyelash, we're making a single stitch, which is from where we've exited, coming around to this pin. So where this pin is, we're just going to enter with our needle. We're going to exit over here at this corner of the next eye. And you'll see as we pull tight, it just creates a bit of a rounding and a bit of a corner to our eye over there. I'm going to do the same thing here where we're just going to enter and our exit point will be where we originally started. And there we go. That gives you the eyebrows and eyelashes for Duck the Dog. So what we're going to do now is we're going to tie off Snip off the excess yarn. And then we're just going to push this knot into the head. There we go, as the knot disappears. This is what you should have at this stage for Doug the Dog. Can now put this aside for now as we will be crocheting the mouth next.